started having dreams or they started hearing his music in their head. And, and there were just all these really supernatural occurrences that started happening. And it even makes you wonder the title of the album, Supernatural. Here Carlos Santana says, There is an invisible radio that Jimi Hendrix and Coltrane tuned into. And when you go there, you start channeling other music. Have you ever wondered where some of these artists actually get their music from? I was watching this interview one day from um, Carlos Santana. And on, on the interview, this reporter is actually talking to him and asking him, oh, how, how do you go about playing so well? Like, um, you, you have such a vibrant presence on stage. Carlos Santana then goes on to explain. He said that what I basically do is I just loosen myself and I just allow basically the spirit to play me. And um, Carlos Santana said that sometimes he's actually watching himself on his own concerts and video clips and he doesn't even recognize or remember himself playing up there. So my question is, what is really playing him? Where is this music coming from? Does music like this, even music that has a really light influence, it doesn't seem like it's too corrupt or anything like that, is there some kind of secret message that is going in the background that is trying to be preached to everyone? Here Carlos Santana goes, says, You meditate and you got the candles, you got the incense, and you've been chanting, and all of a sudden you hear this voice, Write this down. Who do you think that voice is? Well, remember, there are only two parties, God and Satan. And I really don't believe somehow that this is from God. Carlos Santana says, When I let the Spirit play me, it's an intense delight. My role as a musician is to make everyone aware of his own divinity. Here we have the same sin that caused Adam and Eve to fall, being brought back into basically pop culture, subtly through the music that um, Carlos Santana here is producing. And that's the message he's trying to give, give, to get everyone to remember their own divinity. And we know that's the exact reason why Adam and Eve fell, because Satan said, you will become like gods. In the Rolling Stone magazine in 2000, he says, Metatron wants something from me, and I know exactly what it is. The people who listen to music are connected to a higher form of themselves. It's a personal invitation from me to people. Remember your divinity. There we have that same Luciferian language again. So do artists like Santana have an agenda? I believe they do. Well, is this just related to the whole kind of grunge rock kind of scene? Or does it extend outside that? Let's have a look at some other well-known artists from the whole hip-hop and rap scene. And, and you'll, you'll see, we'll see the same thing over and over again. Has everyone here heard of Eminem? Yes, yeah, some have, some haven't. Well, Eminem was um, a, like a big rap star. You could say he was one of the first really big white rap stars to come on the scene. And um, I, I was very heavily into his music when I went through my rebellious stage when I was younger. Now, he's not just some little figure as well. As you can see, Eminem, he broke the record by selling 1.6 million albums within a week. So the, ki the kids love him in America. So he's not just some little musician star. So what kind of role model is Eminem to all these kids that he sells his music to? What kind of fruits does Eminem show? Here are his, some of his lyrics. He says, Follow me and do exactly what the song says. Smoke weed, take pills, drop out of school, kill people and drink. Some role model, huh? And you wonder why there are so many shootings amongst young kids these days. Eminem actually said in one of his SMS messages 
that he sent, that which was published. He said, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think I was a role model to kids. Kids look at me like I'm a god. So even people like Eminem know how much power and influence they have over these kids. But regardless of that, they still make sure they preach such a harsh message to these kids and, and get them to rebel as much as they can. And here's a little quote underneath there saying, um, by, it was by a bunch of street kids, you could say. They said, Eminem's our Christ. We party in his name. Now, people like Eminem have a lot of power amongst the youth. And there was actually this time where um, I, think it was, I think Eminem, he committed some kind of crime. I'm not too sure on the details. But the people in the court actually brought him in and they started to do the trial and stuff like that. And all the kids in the community began to rebel and they said, if you don't release Eminem, we're going to start tearing up the town, we're going to start burning things and rioting. So eventually they let him off. Where's justice these days? Here's another SMS message that was published. He said, they're into hurting themselves. They're cult people, devil worshippers, who say I'm right next to Satan in their thoughts. Yes, okay, Eminem. Here we have another example of another rapper called Easy e Now, not too many people, maybe not here in Australia, have heard of him, but um, he was a really big rapper in America and back in kind of the 80s and 90s, and um, I believe he actually died of AIDS now, which is a shame because who knows if he ever found Christ. But I'm going to show you a little example how a lot of these people actually have, like, they're, they're in the know. They don't just say they're into occult things and they're into satanic things. They actually have quite a bit of knowledge about all of this and we're going to have a look and see why. Easy e in one of his songs, actually sings, Heaven in art which father our, our father which art in heaven. Now it wouldn't seem like much to the untrained eye because, um, and, and most of you will know that this is a verse out of scripture. But it's very interesting what he actually does to this verse in Scripture, especially in that first line where he sings it in reverse. Now, now why, why is this so important? What, what difference does it make? Well, Alester Crowley, who was one of the major occultists of the 19th century, actually wrote in his book, Let him learn to write backwards, walk backwards, listen to phonograph records reversed. Let him practice speaking backwards, let him read practice. Let him read backwards. Sorry. Mm. So these people are, are subtly hide these things in their music. They basically admit to those who are in the know in their cult and stuff like that who they're really worshiping through these subtle little hints. And and one thing, why, why do they brag about these things or hide them? Well, you just have a look. Satan has always been a bragger ever since creation. And he has always tried to exalt himself. And, and he tends to hide it a lot these days, but he still has to put that one little bit in there just to try to brag. But um, yeah, this, this is just a subtle way how Easy E actually showed what he was into. And he was obviously into a lot of Aleister Crowley and occult teachings. And if anyone has ever seen the testimony of Roger Morneau, they would know that um, when Roger Morneau actually went to a lot of the temples that he would go to where they would actually be involved, actively involved in um, satanic worship. 